Schnapp. Und was der G'day guys and welcome to what is going to be the sickest trip we've been on so far. Welcome to Derby, Western Australia, right up in the top there. Have a look at this place, high tide, we've nailed it with the tide, we had a bit of an issue this morning, long story, probably tell you about it a bit later. Mark's just off parking the car now, um, we've got another boat that'll be joining us for a bit of the journey. A fella from down south wanted to come on a trip and I said hey well we're off too so He's dragged his boat all the way from Perth up to here. So this is going to be the sickest trip we've done so far. But anyway, guys, stay tuned. I don't know what else I can say. I'm a little bit lost for words. I need a wee. I'm quite nervous. It's, um, as you can see, drums on the back, spare rope. And that there is chock-a-block. So we got stacks of water, stacks of food. Not that we probably need a huge amount of food, but... Um, yeah, this is going to be epic. Morning guys. Day one, well theoretically day one at the Kimberleys. So we had a pretty good night for our first night. Uh, anchoring here, only had to move once. Just because of the tides. Um, because we, we left so late yesterday afternoon, we sort of got over here just on dark and basically just found something for the night and it probably wasn't the prettiest, but um, yeah, we got we got somewhere and we had one move and, and that was it. But um, definitely, definitely, if you are gonna anchor, use uh, the anchor drift alarm because that, um, that played a critical role last night because we ended up very close to the beach a couple of times in the first spot that we tried. But, um, but anyway, here we are. It's about 5.30, we're up. We're drifting with the, drifting with the current at the moment. We're gonna head out around and around the other side of this big island. We've got a couple of spots we wanna check out, so here we go. Sunshade up there. Right, so we're just sneaking ashore. A bit of a probably a famous spot if you want to call it that. And have a shower here. A bit of fresh water running out of these hills, hopefully. What's in there, Mark? In the bat cave, I reckon. Bat cave. Bat cave. Stay away. It's how Corona started. Box of um, tarp and a can of truck in there. Oh, there you go. Bush chooks all around. Right, eh? Have you seen? Best poo with a view. Danny. View. Now, I used to have a farm down south. One of the outhouse for the shearing sheds. And I thought that was the best poo with a view. But that one there is topping it. Check it out here. Good pressure on the water. Perfect. I'm going to have a shower here. Bloody hot here today, it's real muggy. It's 40 I think when we were driving up here yesterday. But um, so yeah, we've been on the road for a couple of days now, obviously last night in the boat, so we're gonna have a bit of wash in the water there and quick shower and freshen up and hit it again. So I ran out about 60, 80 metres of rope and just had it sitting out and 
tide's on the way in now. Wind's pushing out, so I sort of held the boat out there quite nice, which is good for a change. So hopefully we can drag this thing in quite a way, jump in and head down the coast that way. There's another water hole we're going to look at down there. And there's a barra farm as well down there, might have a look at it. There's a couple of seaplanes been over this morning, obviously the tourists have started coming up here. Cyclone season finished a couple of days ago, so all those guys will start operating again, which is good. Right, so we've just come ashore here. Mate of mine, Shannon, shout out to you Shannon, just give us this spot. She's got the minkota in the water. Didn't realise how fat we were. We've got out the boat and she's a bit high. But, um, yeah, we just got the minkota on the spot like I'll just hang the hang me minkota in the trees here. And we're gonna head up through there. There's a bit of a spring in here. So we're gonna see I've got my best Chinese fighting shoes here, so let's see how we go. Well, there's two fifths of you know what up here. Maybe maybe it was up the other side there. Maybe. Oh, I'll work my way around, I reckon. Not going down to go back up again. Oh, that's a, oh. Ah, Jesus. Ah, bloody green ants. Oh, fuck <sighs> Oh, you were crawling with him. <laughs> oh, he forgot about green ants. Mm. Yeah! So it's off, I think. Get these ants off us. But we're still going here. You can see we found a spring, it is flowing very, very slowly. I think I'm doing more damage to myself than what's going to be up here. It's pretty hot at the moment. It's bloody nice in the shade though. At least these green ants stay away from us, we'll be right. So with the tide up nice and high now, we're headed back to where we started our day at fresh water. Have another wash, a cool down, and something for lunch. Lunch, Mark. That's it. Beautiful. Homemade salami, cheese and garlic and biscuits, and definitely a beer. Mm. And check that out. My God. With our first epic day on the water finally coming to an end, we thought we'd best find a beach for the night and check out the beach we found. Best little cool thing out because you always got a little gas burner with you. Mm. One of those bad boys. Done. All right, so this is our sleeping arrangements. Pretty similar, me and Mark, Midgey Dome. We've done away with the swags this trip. And we've gone for these hiking mattresses. Self inflating. Just leave them out for a little bit. Cedar Summit ones, I've got a smaller one, a little bit smaller, but that's plenty for me. A single doona. This is pretty cool actually, because you can jump in it like a sleeping bag or just use it as a sheet and a pillow. And that's us. So we're trying to save, trying to save a fair bit of room in the boat. And that's done a marvelous job, an absolute marvelous job saving a lot of room. But what it's done is it's allowed us to put a lot of beer, a few Cokes, a lot more weight in the boat because we've got a lot more room so we've been struggling to get on the plane today uh well yesterday was the worst obviously well the heaviest we've burned off about 90 liters of fuel so far out of the main tank still at 260 liter drums but we'll put them in once we've gone over gone over 120 liter burn so i'll put both of them in together but um yes yeah, so that's us pretty simple sleeping it's comfy enough it's the last night in the boat all we had was the air mattress and the 
and the little crook cover and that was us so we're hoping to get on the land a bit more because last night it's a bit of a worry with the boat because you only have one anchor out but hopefully tonight two anchors out should be good and should be able to get a decent night's sleep there you go that's pretty much it bees are all digging me doing a cover don't tell the kids i stole one of theirs get the midges out that's us got the fire cranking over here chuck the sausages on soon a little fire a bit of our rubbish there we'll burn a bit of our rubbish cardboard box and stuff Boat's still all down there. No doubt I'll be setting the alarm tonight. Check it throughout the night. Midnight high, as I said before, so it'll be a bit of work tonight just to make sure it's all good. Oh, here we go. Sardo sausages. Rice. Bloody perfect. Oh, he's got to taste a bit. Not bad. Pretty hot, stand next to fire though. Morning guys, day two of this adventure. Not a breath of wind, and it's hot. It's hot already. Bloody. Yeah, so plan for today, right over in the back over there, there's a creek system, and apparently there's a, there's a really nice waterfall up there, and hopefully with the amount of rain that they've had up here this wet season, it's still flowing a bit and we'll replenish some of our water. Um, didn't quite want to go to plan last night with the boat. We got up at high tide, which is 12.30. Just made sure it was hanging right. It's obviously such a big tide here. I think it was 9 or 10 metres last night. But um, we just made sure there was enough anchor rope out the front. And obviously we got the back tide off. But um, yeah, so I wanted to get up it up when the tide was almost or well, the water was just about gone from the boat and undo the back of the boat and give it a push and hopefully with the last bit of the run out tide I would have held it out there somewhere near low tide at the moment so um so we could have got going a bit earlier but not to be but um yeah so we're not in a rush this morning to get going I'm not sure we can't actually get up to this creek until about half tide anyway so that's yeah, so we sort of went too phased. Pretty... Alright, so we've got a little feed of horses here. Here's one here. Okay. Another little guy there. Now, I don't do oysters. Last time I had them, I dry reached out a bit with my dad. That I could eat six, and I couldn't. And that was probably 25 years ago, 30 years ago nearly. And I've never touched them ever since. So we got a bit of, bit of soy and chuck it on there and we'll see how we go. Here we go. Oyster. Still tastes like shit, but just with soy sauce on it this time. Whew. Yeah, I'll probably have a couple more. <laughs> Ooh, look at that yeah. one. Oh, that's yeah. right out the soy. That's yours, Mark. That's the big one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've got, what have we got here? Two, four, five, six. We've got seven. We've got a feed so we'll, Yeah, we'll get stuck into them. All right, first one down. Plenty of soy sauce tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> I think the soy sauce is the key. I'm no real crustacean shellfish mm, eater. Not bad. And um, Mark's probably not too bad on it, but I'm horrible at it. I, I like me fish and that's about it. But, um, so, yeah. Anyway, we'll tuck into a couple more of these. Like I said before, we're struggling with a bit of fish and that's predominantly most of our diet here for this 14 days. So, um, yeah, we'll tuck in. Water's not far away from the boat now. It's 40 metres of water. Well, they say it's turning here, you know, I thought, I almost think it could be a bit shallow or something. Mm. And then it's like, um, the blue water's just there. 42 metres nearly. And that's happening. Chase 
down this creek and it's tired so we're gonna pin it and get down there this is what we're looking for guys fresh water pretty good hole here I think 10 meters water here but the trouble is back there back down that way there was only four meters of water right so I topped off topped off a few bottles of water here I'm gonna follow this water up hot tip number two apparently there's a beautiful waterfall up here hot tip number one wasn't so good but I think we're in the wrong spot so we'll see how we go this trip Tackles that try and get our way up into that next pool there's not a whole lot of difference between high tide and here where we are now so I'm a little bit scared of our mate snapping hamburg not a whole lot that gets me but that one does That's bloody awesome. Oh, so refreshing. So goddamn refreshing. Let's try and get over here and into the falls. This is bloody amazing. I think Mark's going to get washed off the rock in a minute. A little bummy anyway. Very ominous grey clouds up there. Not sure what's going on, but I don't really care at the minute. This is bloody magic. This is what I was saying earlier about our little swimming hole not being that far off high tide. Where I thought we could have a quick wash and a swim here on the way back. Kind of freshen up. That's now all salt water. So we've got that little bit over there we can get. And boat's still over there. Neat and tidy, that's good. All right, so we've had a wash and a powder up and a freshen up, some fresh clothes. Fishing was pretty dismal there. We told it might be all right, but um, yeah, nothing. Maybe we got there a little bit late on the tide, running tide apparently. So we're gonna have a trawl on the way out. And then we're gonna head off. Was it the, the old Pearl Dives graveyards? We're gonna have a look, quick look at them. And then we're gonna probably head straight up to Silica Beach for the night. So we've got a few caves to kill Savi, so we'll get stuck into it. If we get any fish, definitely put the GoPro on because it's been a bit slack. But Fish on! Finally! Oh no, he came towards us. I think the Queenie. I'm going to try and spin around a bit. through this water where it's gushing out of the back there trying to get something for dinner Queenie's pretty good when you're doing a curry or sato or something like that so we might have to keep this going it stays nice and clean with me. a lot of flavour in what you're putting in there just go steady here whoa, whoa, whoa. there you go fish is on board all right morning guys day three of the trip um, yesterday she cut up pretty pretty rough we were meant to get out to silica beach but we sort of give it a miss yesterday Arvo and just had a bit of a troll. We got that queenie, so that was good. So we had fish and chips for dinner last night. That was bloody beautiful. Just cooked it on the boat and ate it on the boat. And we ended up staying at exactly the same beach we were at the night before. So um, yeah, this morning we got Brecky on the run, bowl of muesli. Just got a lure out, dragging it. Have something deep, we'll make a coffee on the run. We ended up running out our big 100 meter roll of rope there last night and that kept the boat right out in the water so we're able to get going sort of before first light as you can see so or before sun up so we're going to eat our brekkie and trawl a couple of lures and we'll probably see it silica beach
So if you're enjoying the adventure so far, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, hit the little bell for notifications, and that'll let you know when the next episode's up. So in the next episode, we finally make it to Silica Beach. We go and explore some of the old relics of Cockatoo Island. We find a spectacular vertical waterfall, and then we go through the world famous horizontals and push the little tinny to its absolute limits with the water there. So stay tuned guys, as always, tell your mates, and enjoy.